Hi, welcome to SBR Videos. I'm Peter Loshek. Sitting next to me is Mike Brenner. It's the uh, conference championships, of course, in the NFL playoffs. And we Serious. are uh, talking right now with Rob and the Dream from Sports Betters TV. Everyone's given their opinions uh, this week here at SBR Videos. We're getting all the opinions we can possibly get before we make our bets, Mike Brenner. Is that true? Or, I mean, are your, are your opinions on this game set? Or, or could you be swayed yeah. by what no, Rob I, and the Dream I, have to say? I don't think anything could sway me. But I'm, I'm you know, as a big fan of theirs, I'm anxious mm -hmm. to hear their breakdown and, and hear what yeah. they like. But would any Anything surprise me? Absolutely not. But as far as setting my ways, nothing's going to sway me. I don't think. Who knows? The dream's yeah. liable to pull something out from well, under let's his ask, sleeve. Let's ask Rob so. and the dream. You know, me and Mike interview uh, a bunch of guys during the week, get all their opinions from professional gamblers, from semi-professional gamblers alike. Are you guys set on your opinions on this game, or, or could you be swayed by, uh, by further information that could come in? I'm, I'm set, but I could be swayed if Peyton Manning were to call me up right now and tell me <laughs> what to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That, that might sway that, me as includes, well. And that includes Tom Brady, Carson Palmer, and or Cam Newton. I could be swayed by any one of those four gentlemen. <laughs> yep, but uh, hey, the dream, don't mean to cut you off, but I, I think if Peyton Manning called you maybe three years ago or two years ago, I would say, yeah, but if he called you this year, it might get disconnected. Hey, yes, listen, it I'm, might. listen, if Peyton was to call, I'm all ears. Trust me. Any one of them four guys, I'm all ears regardless. Um, one of the greatest quarterbacks that ever lived and ever done it, and I know that we're seeing a decline and maybe him riding off into the sunset, but I got to say, man, he is still the field general. Okay. Well, in light of that, then, what do you think about Denver at uh, plus three and the uh, the total of 44 and a half? I'll tell you the opinions that I've heard. Most of the opinions that I, or the majority of the opinions that I've heard that I respect this week uh, have been leaning towards either uh, Denver plus three or the under 44 and a half or both. Wow. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. And Denver plus three is very attractive to the gambling society because obviously it is the home team underdog. Um, when you look at this particular game, the thing you want to look at is you want to look at obviously the running game. Uh, what Denver likes to do is they like to run a single back run stretch run play mm -hmm. uh, with a cut back. You, you, the running back will have one to two opportunities to cut back against the grain of the block scheme and cause all kinds of chaos for New England. Uh, Denver is going to try to implement this. Now, they tried to run it against the Pittsburgh Steelers. It wasn't that successful. Even still being not that successful, they managed to run for 110 rushing yards. The reason I'm talking about the running game so much is because when Denver first played New England in the past, this, this, this season, they ran for 179 rushing yards. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have talked about Peyton Manning throwing ducks and Peyton Manning doesn't have the arm strength to do. I can tell you, if they are able to rush for 179 rushing yards, Peyton and his ducks will be saved for the Super Bowl um, in this situation. All right. And I'm taking a look at this particular game. I mean, you know, and it all depends on if they're going to, what kind of game plan they're going to have defensively for uh, Tom Brady and the boys. My feeling is what you need to do in this particular situation is pro provide coverage sacks. What you got to do is you got to double up Gronk, double up Amendola and or, and or Edelman and put your best guy on whoever's left. I think personally in this particular, because Tom Brady is not going to run the ball, let's face it. I mean, yeah, I don't even know if that's in his contract, guys, to be honest with you. <laughs> but I'm taking a look at this particular game here. You know, three points, obviously, either way you go with this, your probably best bet is to buy the hook regardless, you know, whether it's three and a half there you go. taking the dog or two and a half versus the favorite. Now, I'm looking at this, and at the end of the day, I just think that the pedigree with – you know, with Bill Belichick and Tom Brady and the package, I think they'll do just enough. I saw a lot of holes in the Denver defense and the secondary. I think they'll do just enough to come out of Colorado with the victory and win the AFC and make it to the Super Bowl. Dream, what's your thoughts on that? And no one likes to be a tease. However, I am going to be a tease in this instance because my – Rule of thumb for this particular game, I like a teaser. I like a two-team teaser, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I like the Denver Broncos with seven points. Mm -hmm. You're going to put seven points onto that three, and you're going to get the Denver Broncos up to ten points. Because even if the Patriots were to win this game, I see the Patriots winning this game by a very tight, small margin. 
I think that Denver plus as many points as you can get, and in this case, we're going to tease them up to plus 10. I think Denver plus 10 points is a home run at home. I feel that the Denver Broncos will be able to successfully run the ball against the New England Patriots, and I feel that the Denver Broncos defense, okay, what they're going to do is they're going to press coverage the Patriot receivers. They're going to bump and run, and they're going to get all up in their face and frustrate them. The five and outs, the five-yard drops, the five-yard pass that you saw the Kansas City Chiefs allow the Patriots to get away with all game, Denver is not going to allow that to happen. That along with a hell of a high pass rush from Von Miller to Marco Ware, I mean, it just spells a rough day for the New England Patriots. And should the New England Patriots be able to eke out a win, I can't see them winning by more than three points anyway. So I say take the Broncos. We're going to put them in a two-team teaser, and we will get to the other team we're going to add to that teaser in a few minutes. And we all know that sides last were uh, like very too. profitable. Yeah, very profitable as far as teasers last week. Um, every side – yeah, Regardless, every side that whichever side you would have teased, <laughs> right. you would have won. You would have came away with a big win. And sure, so. I mean, if you you know if you're looking, yeah. especially you see this a lot in the NFL playoffs. If if you think that the spreads are absolutely yeah. dead on, there's yeah. no way to bet it one way or the other. Then bam, sure. the exactly. teasers are your play. Now the dream, I like that breakdown. That's it, and we are we are all about manipulating those spreads in our favor. It is two. No, absolutely, absolutely. That's how we'll grab the edge away. against the book, you know, and that's how we'll yeah, stick exactly. them. But you said one yes. thing I really like. It also, you know, the running game of Denver. And if I'm them, I'm leaning more towards Anderson this week because he really is the one that got the majority of the yards last week. I think they focus on Anderson running the ball. And and I was just kidding earlier with Peyton. He's he's one of my idols from when I was a kid. All right, I respect him, and I think his playoff pedigree alone will carry it. They can find out what he can do great now, as opposed to what he needed to do great. So I think that's a plus. But here's my intake, and again, my input on this. I think coaching wins this game, and I am absolutely just not sold on, on Kubiak as a coach that can win the big one, especially not going against a Belichick in, in a championship game like this. So uh, with the teaser, I love Denver. With the regular line, I like Patriots. That's my take. I agree with you with the coach, but the only thing I'm going to add, and I know there hasn't been great success in the playoffs and in the Super Bowl, Denver, you have two coaches because you have Kubiak and you have Peyton. You yes. know, and Peyton out there on the field, you have an on-field coach. Um, and I think that that, may, that dynamic may also come into play as he's going to audible out of blitz situations and put himself in the most favorable situation. I mean, I mean, I love Tom Brady, and Tom Brady's probably going to go down maybe as the one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Yay. As far as field, field management, game management, audible calling, recognizing defenses and understanding what they want to do. I, I mean, I think we still have to give that nod as far as his brain is concerned from a coaching standpoint. You give that nod to Peyton Manning. So that would be their on-field edge. Okay. And, I, would, and I hate to cut you off like that, and I'm not at all. Sure, I'm sure. interjecting because I, I totally agree, and I would have said in, in times past, you're absolutely right. But last week, and maybe I was seeing things, I could have swore a couple times Peyton should have trumped the call and called the audible but he didn't. So I don't know if that's Kubiak putting the brakes on that or hopefully Peyton this week says, you know what, I don't care what comes out of the, you know, into the earpiece. I know what I'm calling. But I swear, Dream, I saw some plays last week where I could have said to myself, I mean, I did. I said, there's no way Peyton would accept that call. He would have audible. So is someone locking him down or is he maybe just not making that right audible call? That's, that's where I'm at with that. Yeah, good point. Very good point. I'm there with you. Yeah, and I kind of agree with that. I just do think that the Pittsburgh Steelers defense played uncharacteristically well against the run game against Denver. And I felt like Denver decided that they wanted to be stubborn and try to push the issue based on what they saw in film. Uh, I think a little bit of that will be different this week um, as they're going to maybe rely on Peyton a little more as being an on-field general uh, in and trying to get around what the Patriots bring to the table. Great matchup, great game, no matter how you look at it, though. Absolutely. Absolutely. Pete, how what? about you? I'm, 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 I'm sold on the teaser now. I'm actually <laughs> sold on the teaser now. Yeah. And, of course, uh, you know, home yeah. dogs are the best w teams to tease in the NFL, and especially, you know, if you're, uh, if you're expecting a lower-scoring game, the, the total's 44.5, a, a little yeah. bit high. But, again, it goes right in line with all the sharper opinions that I've heard, yeah. already liking the under and leaning towards a Denver just at plus three. I'm... 
I'm convinced. Yeah. I've, I've been actually convinced in the course of this video that Denver at, uh, at, on a tease uh, has some decent value. I think so, too. And you know I like teasers, and the dream just took it a step further. So I like what you guys are putting out there. How All about right. we break into the second Let's game? Let's go to the second game, Arizona-Carolina. I can tell you that uh, this is the one game that I did personally bet myself. I took the over 47, and I'm sure that this line is going to uh, probably, even if sharp action comes in, it's probably going to hang because the public's going to be all over the uh, the uh, the over. And yeah. we got a standard line here, Carolina minus three. Obviously, most strengths, mostly strengths uh, on both sides here. Question is, I guess, uh, are there any matchups that you think will be uh, uh, you know more important here than people are giving credit for, or is it all just going to come down to uh, execution? Rob in the dream, what do you think? Jim, I'll kick it off with you. What you got? Execution is always the key, no matter what the game is. Right. Um, but when we look at this particular game, I think a strong, a very strong matchup is going to be the wide receiver core of the Arizona Cardinals versus the secondary of the Carolina Panthers. I think Floyd presents a serious problem for the car, for the for the. the, the the Panthers' is defense is secondary. Uh, he's a big receiver, you know, very physical. You got Larry Fitzgerald underneath. Uh, I expect him to have a lot of success. I expect Carson Palmer, you know, a lot of mistakes were made last week, and I think that he's hopefully recovered and shook some of that off. Um, I expect him to go out there, and I expect him to perform. I really like what I see out of the Cardinals. Um, the thing with Carolina, and, and I can't take anything away from him. Obviously, Cam Newton is the MVP of the game, MVP of the league this year. Mm -hmm. Incredible gameplay out of him. Right. But once I move away from Cam Newton, I start to have a bunch of question marks. Now, yes, they did get success out of Stewart last week, but that hasn't been a consistent theme throughout most of the season. Yep. Ted Ginn has popped his head in, in, his, in his hands in the game here and there from week to week, but that hasn't been a consistent, you know, theme throughout the season. And Ted Ginn, I mean, if you're if you're in a burning building and you got your kid in your hand, your newborn kid in your hand, and Ted Ginn standing underneath there saying, throw him down to me, tell me you're not going to take a second thought about dropping <laughs> that baby down the I love kitchen. it. I love it. I'm tell, right tell on board that. with that one. <laughs> <laughs> and he's banged up, too. We don't even yes. know if he's going to be and He's banked up too. So when I look at Carolina's <laughs> weapons, I I I stop it. I stop it. Cam Newton, and I say to Arizona's, you know, more than capable defense. I say, if you guys can contain Cam and keep him to a minimal, and keep him rushing from rushing all around, and we put somebody on Greg Olson, I mean, I think we have a distinct advantage. But when I look at the Arizona Cardinals, I look at, okay, well, we're going to have Carson Palmer throwing the ball. We've got Larry Fitzgerald. we got Michael Floyd. We also have the running game in, in effect. There's a lot of weapons, and don't forget Arizona's tight end as well, a lot of weapons that, that Arizona's bringing to the table. Um, I like Arizona in this spot. However, we have two options because we're going to have the teaser and we're taking yep. Denver plus the 10. We have two options. We can either take the over and bring it down to 40, which is – Absolutely incredible, as far yeah. as I'm concerned. Or I believe we could take Arizona plus the 10, which to me is another home run, uh, an, an easy way to go. I think you can either do either or, and you're going to be successful at the end of the day. I, I, I got to right. jump in go there because the, the dream, I'm, I'm right, completely right next to you, side by side on that. I couldn't have broke it down any better, and, and you're completely right. I think a big weakness that not a lot of people are talking about is we got a banged up secondary for Carolina. So will those receivers, those bigger receivers, take advantage of that? Hell yes. And also yeah. last week, a little monkey jumped off of Carson's Palmer's back. All right, he's only played in like three or four playoff games, but he got his first W, but that goes a long way in the huddle. And Bruce Arians is coaching this team up. They come in healthy, and Larry Fitzgerald finds his legs again. I think this is an absolute beautiful play with the teaser and given 10 because I think it's an outright win for the Cardinals. And uh, I love that breakdown. And Olsen also got banged up. He took a hell of a shot and had a stinger last week, had to leave the game, sure. came back in, and I didn't see him moving like he usually does. All right, yes, Cam Newton deserves the MVP. Nobody can take it away. They've done phenomenal this year. Riverboat Ron, as Gruden said, has coached his ass off. 
But I think that ship stopped sailing this week, and uh, I'm right on board with you, Dream. So if you had to choose one for the teaser, would it be Arizona up to 10 no or doubt. the over no, uh, at 40 and a half? I, I think either of them. I think well, which you can't would you go prefer? wrong. Which would you prefer? You know what? I would prefer taking the Cardinals with the 10 because uh -huh. this might be the week Cam's offense gets slowed down because Stewart had that one big run, and the Dream stepped on this one perfectly. That was not consistent. His running game was not consistent. So I don't know that Carolina can pull their end to cover any total, but I do like that. But I'm going to jump where I think it's an outright win. Take Cardinals plus 10. You know, really? yeah, they, and, absolutely. It's beautiful. And don't be scared to take a three teamer and get even more value for your money and take, you know, take the Broncos plus 10, the Cardinals plus plus 10 and the over down the 40. Yeah, I like that. Or, take, or take all four of them and yeah. throw in the uh, the Denver yeah. under and do yeah. a four-teamer. <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. Absolutely. No, I like well, that you know strategy because that's what we're about really at the like end of the yeah. day. And then you throw in a freaking NBA game at the yeah. same time. You make it a freaking five-teamer. There we that's go. That's what I would do. That's what I would do. <laughs> hey, Rob, what, Rob, what's your take on this? You know what? The, the thing that frightens me a little bit about this is it, Charlotte is a very hostile environment. And we saw it last week in uh, the first half of the Seattle game. I mean, they laid the smackdown on Seattle. Ooh. Second half was a different story. Now, yeah. I'm looking at this in the last four games with Carolina. They have won by an average of 25. I believe it's 25 and a little over 25 points. Arizona, for some reason, I don't. Something's bothering me about this team okay. in the last few weeks. It almost looked like last week. I mean, Carson Palmer looked like a little bit of a like a deer in headlights as far as the postseason was concerned. Yeah, he got the monkey off his back, got the W and all that. And this is going to be a great matchup between two Heisman Trophy winners as well. You know, I'm mm -hmm. looking at both of these teams being the highest scoring teams in the NFL. You're looking at one and two here, and they both have really good defenses. Mm -hmm. I think this game is going to be a, pretty much of a stomach ache game. I, I see, I just see Carolina finding a way to win in Charlotte and moving to the Super Bowl. Guys, I hate to go chalk. No, but great. that's what I'm looking at. You know, it is what it, you know, it is what it is. I'm just giving you what I'm thinking as a spread. Sure. Get it down to two so and a half. So you think there's value at minus three? Yeah, get it down to two and a half. I like buying a hook in that particular situation because I like to win rather than push. Sure. I'd like to make one last point, and I was going to save this actually only for our audience, but I'm going to share it with you guys because you guys, I mean, we love and we are honored to be on here and for giving us this opportunity. I'm going to share this one last point that stuck with me. Um, I heard over the course of the week, somebody asked uh, an, an ex-coach, he asked them that the Patriots, that the Jets had success with huddling up their defense and then putting their defense out at the last second to t kind of confuse Tom Brady. Mm. And the coach said that you can't confuse Tom Brady, you can't confuse Peyton Ball because they've seen everything. Yeah. He also said you can't, in that same sentence, he added Carson Palmer in there. And it stuck to me because what we have is we have three really seasoned yeah. quarterbacks that have been around a long time and have seen a lot. The one guy that who doesn't have the experience that hasn't seen a lot that we have at the helm is the MVP in Cam Newton. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the one guy who doesn't have the, the, the pedigree and the seasoning that the other three have. And so far this, this playoffs run, we saw Hoyer up against Alex Smith. Hoyer went down. We saw Kirk Cousins up against Aaron Rodgers. Kirk Cousins went down. So I believe that Carson Palmer has a distinct advantage over Cam Newton, and we may see the Panthers go down. Uh, yeah. Good point. I like it. Very, very good point. Very good point. And not to be, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring this up. There is one big weapon for the Panthers on the defensive side, and that's that Luke Keekley. Mm -hmm. That guy plays like a beast. He's hungry, and he absolutely yeah. makes that defense go. All absolutely. right. I, think I don't want to, but, but we might see Carson say, Luke. I am your father. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right. Well, I think I think we got it. Anything else you guys want to add, or should we wrap it up? Ah, I think we're good. I think we I think we touched everything. All right. Awesome insights, comprehensive analysis of the two conference championship games, the Dream and Rob. Thanks so much for joining us today, Mike Brenner. Awesome job all Fantastic. around. Thanks, guys. All right, guys. Take Thank care. Thank you guys so much, and take care.